Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Game Hub. I'm your host Gamer K, and this is a very special episode of the Game Hub and a new segment that I've been planning on doing for a little bit, for a while now. It has been about good two years since I've been to a full convention. I mean, smaller ones in my hometown are going about nowadays now, but stuff like Fan Expo and big ones out haven't been to them for a good couple for about two years now because of the whole pandemic shutdown and everything. And that is why I wanted to do a certain type of video once I reached 100 subscribers. But I wanted to do a little thing uh, before all that. This new segment is called Tales from the Convention. C can we put can we put the title up, please? One sec. Tales from the Convention. I know it's nothing uh, fancy, but it's basic. Basically, in my seven years of going to conventions, well, uh, about six, uh, eight, about eight years of going to the conventions, starting at my local convention here, that's what got me into this, I've met a whole lot of amazing people, a bunch of celebrities, a bunch of just people like me who are nerdy and fun, and have met a lot of great, amazing friends through going to these conventions. Some of them are local talent. Some of them are in from Toronto because I only, because I've only ever gone to like the big convention in Toronto and one in Detroit. But I felt like it would be a fun thing since conventions are opening up now and to get ready, I want to share some of my personal stories and a good number of uh, fun tales with the celebrities I've met with a bunch of other stuff like the people I've met in these conventions just to have a good show just to ha talk about them and today I will be for the first episode of Tales from the Convention I will be talking about a man who is not only an incredible talent an amazing author and a passionate man about his project I am proud to say that he's one of the coolest dudes I've ever met in my entire life and yes, I'm including all the celebrities in there. I am talking, going to talk about author and Windsor native Matt Wayne Banks, who is the author, creator of Master Defenders, a book series that he created from characters in a world that he developed when he was a kid. Now, to start off, these are his other books, and that is his poster in the middle, if anyone can make out the image. So, he's he's got four books right now. First one, we've got uh, Master Defenders, the first book. I started reading it when I first met him, and I he's at, I first met Matt in my, one of my, at Christmas Comic Con in my hometown of, in 2015, I believe it was. Yeah, 2015. November of 2015, and me and my best friend, we were at the con, we were just walking around, I saw his him promoting his book, and it actually caught my attention. <clears throat> so we chatted with him for a bit, found out we had a friend in common, and hearing him talk about his characters, it's, to put it, <clears throat> to put it shortly, Master Defenders is a series what happens when you take the superheroes of the Justice League and mix it in with the sci-fi world of Star Wars or some other sci-fi show? You mix it all together with an amazing writer and you got something that's truly unique. And as you can see on my first Master Defenders, there's a couple scuffs, there's some bent pages because I've had to read it a good number of times in order to remind myself what was happening. And book two. Codes of Corruption. I'm currently reading it right now. I've oh, got five chapters left, but it gets me every single time. Like every, the what he does in the story, I don't want to ruin it for people who are interested. But you gotta check it out. Hit I uh, a link for the Master Defenders Facebook page will be in the description right here. Okay, am, really. Okay, one second, guys. There we go. Link for the Master Defenders to Facebook page is right there. Go check it out. You can buy the books on Amazon. You can buy them on Kindle. But personally, 
I would buy the paper copies. This way, you can show people the book, you can talk about it, and when you meet Mr. Banks, you can get him to sign the book, and it's fantastic. Third book is one that I am looking forward to like crazy. <laughs> Shields of Hope. And as you can see, the art style is very, very well done. It's very cool seeing all these different characters. And the final book for now is... <laughs> Technical difficulty. Is the biggest and fattest book I think I'll ever read that's not a textbook from college is Origins of Anarchy. Now, just from looking at this, I love the color palette that goes between each book, how the first two books are kind of dark and show some of the characters, while the other two have the, uh, the yellow and the green light to shine them. That's what makes this, like, not, not just, because the thing about a book is that if the cover can't get you get can't get you it's almost like a candy bar you don't want the you want to take a bite out of it and but the minute you do you want the person to crave that candy bar you want them to crave that book and this book the characters in it are some of the most interesting characters i've read in recent memory i mean i know a lot, when people watch a new tv show they do a lot to explain the story, like explain the characters a bit. And it, sometimes it almost feels forced, but like you, you're force feeding information to these to the reader or the viewer that you're supposed to know these characters. <clears throat> In Master Defenders, I th we are plopped into the world that these characters live in and... It's not forcibly forced information. You go, th you kind of go through the motions with them as almost like you've been with them for years and you f you're figuring out information about them. And if you guys think that this basically to, to summarize Master Defenders, it's not a comic. It's more of a graphic novel just without pictures. <laughs> Although in each book, there will be pictures of the characters with all their abilities, their affiliations. Now, I'm, I'm going to give a suggestion. Go for the color copies. That way you can see more of the characters. So if you fall in love with a character and you want to cosplay as them, get, the color copies are perfect. Plus, you can always find uh, more information about them on his, on his Facebook page and directly from that Mr. Banks himself. Now, one thing I really love about the story is... How it devol how it dives into these characters' background. And if you think that it's a kid's book, you are far from it because they have a lot of mature subject matter from from, from ge mass genocide of aliens to violence to, th to blackmail, to drug abuse, to traumatic childhood like, Everyone knows in, in a TV show or an anime that the main characters usually suffer some form of trauma or tragic backstory. And Master Defenders is no different. And that's what I love about them. If, if a character goes through the story with no hitch, with no trauma, then th they seem too perfect. And the problem with being too perfect is then you're unrelatable. To have a character suffer a good to suffer any kind of trauma or a backstory. It's, if I could give a comparison, it's almost like the main cast of One Piece. Every single one of them has some form of tragic backstory that really hits hard and it makes you care for them. It makes you feel connection between them a little bit because you go through that with them in the story. And that's what this book series does immensely with its characters. And that, and I will admit, I did get mad at him when I saw him last uh, talking about this book, because he gets he gets rid of a bunch of characters in a in a clever way that doesn't seem like he's trying to downsize the cast so much. But then he brings in a bunch of new characters. So 
it's one thing that I do love about his storytelling is that he doesn't uh, do storytelling or get rid of characters for the sake of getting rid of characters. It all has a purpose to send characters on a certain journey, if so, like to deal with the death of the comrades. And I do love that. And one thing I'm going to say without question, there are two characters in this book series that I love with a passion. And one of them I haven't even met yet because I kind of looked at the pictures in one of the books of the character. And I'm just going to say, it's this, let me find in book three. Let's see, where are you? Where are you? You, you little, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where are you? Here we go. I'm going to bring it up close to the camera. Right there. Asylum Zaklad. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, if I am, Matt. Oh, boy. Uh, the, just this character just looks so creepy. It's. And that has confirmed for me that it is a female character. So to see a, a creepy, assassin, psycho-looking character like this, she, her abilities are experienced slasher, master ac acrobat, advanced agility, shadow energy, predator instinct, keen animal claws, and advanced reflexes. This, to me, feels like if you take... Um, uh, am I going to be doing jokes in this? I am. I am. If you take Copperhead from Assassin from uh, Arkham Origins, the one that they made for this game, and combine her with Bloody Mary's creepy-looking alternate form from The Wolf Among Us, merge them together and give her some shadow energy abilities. Oh my God! I can't wait to read book three and to get this character. I, I, I really can't wait because I love twisted characters like this. Because, I mean, I love the Joker. I love Bloody Mary. Any character that is uh, crazy and diff crazy and bizarre. Because, to quote Mark Hamill, you people love insanity because if you're insane, you're unpredictable. And if you're unpredictable, you're never boring. And that's one thing in spades that Master Defenders does with its characters. One, like... There are so many characters that I just hate with a passion. And there are some characters that I absolutely love and s love. Like, I, I, I know I just said love twice, but w w let me get book one because I got the colored version, I think, of this, I think. Uh, did, yes, I did. One character I really, really love and I love immensely is a hero named Lynx, who is an electrical charge speedster. Okay, I say speedster, he's not the Flash. Electra bolts with amazing timing. In addition, he has enhanced speed and agility. I don't know why immediately he just jumped off the page to me, but I love, if there's one thing I love other than uh, creepy and uh, hilarious villains, one type of character I always love is the smart mouth who always, he was always a pain in the ass but he always does good work. It It's almost like... But uh, I can't really put my finger on it. But every character in this book, you're either going to love, you're going to sympathize with, or especially in book two, there are characters that you will hate with a passion. And by hate with a passion, I mean... They're, they're just so good villains, that's why you hate them. And what I also love is that how a bunch of uh, other comic writers from DC and Marvel, they're starting to give certain villains uh, redemption arcs by building them up at, and misunderstood. I'm going to tell you, Hank Lasher in book two will get no sympathy from me at all. And I'm, I'm just saying that he's a fantastic villain. And I hate him for it. Like, it's one of those... It's like hating... Oh, I can't even explain it. It's just so... Just great writing in general. And also, 
like I said, this may be for, like, maybe teenagers or maybe preteens because it's got some... I will admit, give Matt this. Uh, in some of the scenes, when he does the romance sections and when he has a builds a connection with two characters, like, it just swoons my heart because I'm a sucker for... As much as I love good action and violence, I love good romance. And... Especially in this book, I had to read the chapter a good number of times to get the to get the the uh, romance down because, like I said, I'm a sucker for good romance, and he does it in spades. And he doesn't go, and he's not afraid to go over to go full on with it. I mean, it's basically what you would find in a show like Arrow or or Chicago Fire, where there is the romance, but it's not full blown out but i will say 50 shades of gray writer could take a lesson from these books on how to do romance just gonna say that and from for regular viewers of mine who who if my word isn't uh good enough for to for you to check out master defenders matt told me a story <clears throat> And back in 29, actually, it was an event that actually happened at our local convention. It was 2019, the last year before the lockdown. Mm. Mm. And so, our big conventions in in town are held at our local casino. And it's not comp, it's not fan expo big, but it's still pretty sizable. So Matt was in one section, and right across from him is where they did the celebrities, because we usually put the celebrities right on the back wall. <clears throat> and right across from Matt, at his booth, where he was promoting Master Defenders, is the one and only Lando Calrissian, Billy D. Williams. And I shit you not. Oh, no, wait, that happened in 2018, I think. I may be getting confused on when uh, it happened. I, I'm a little confused. But all I know is Matt told me the story in space. So he was just, you know, talking to people, giving out his, uh, selling his books, selling his merch. And Billy D. Williams gets up and walks to his booth by himself, asks him questions about the story and personally asks for the first book of the series. He signs it, gives it to Billy D. Williams, and that's all he wrote. So, if my seal of approval and my word as a as a critiquer, as a as a critic, is not enough, Billy D. Williams gave this book his own stamp of approval just by him purchasing it himself. He could have asked his handler to go, but no, he went himself because that's how interesting the book is. The series, in general. And once I finish all, all the books, Matt has, Matt has informed me that book five is n almost in print. So, for fans of Master Defenders, for those who just want to get into the series now... Pick up the entire series. You can once again, you can buy it, find it on Amazon. You can find it for your Kindle. But I, I, I tell you to buy the paper books because then, if you live in Windsor or if you're in Ontario area and you come to the local conventions and you want to meet the master himself. It's a way. I mean, it's. I mean, it's way better. Like, that's why I don't like buying digital books, because it doesn't make sense. Because if you meet the author, what are you going to tell them? Um, I have my book on digital. Could you please sign my iPad or my Kindle? <laughs> what? No. That's why you get the paper comp backs. Because that, that way, Matt will write an amazing message and his slogan, keep defending. And I will keep defending this amazing series. And I told him this early this year. That I predict in the next two years, some smart guy, some amazing company or program is going to find out about this. 
and make a series about it. And I honestly hope it's an animated series because, because with the special effects that they do in this, there's a lot of live action superhero shows in general. But I think if they do this justice with an animated series and they don't go off and they're not a and they make it adult-ish like young justice did this book this series could contend with spectacular spider-man batman animated series justice league unlimited any of the big name superhero tv shows that are out it could even compete with teen titans sorry yeah this could compete with teen titans not that one. Get that out of here. I mean this Teen Titans. The one that so many people loved. And, and loved the characters. And loved the action and the stories. And the re... And, uh, this could also rival with Static Shock. And one thing I forgot to mention about the cast of characters. Is that I don't think it's done enough. Matt did a hell of a job of making all the characters diverse with in many different ways. And I love that. That every single character is diverse in their own, with their own ethnicities, with their own genders, with, with everything. And it's done very, very well. Plain and simple. Now, one thing I love to do whenever I get into a series, whether it be a fan fiction series or uh, this in general, is I, I, once I read, once I start reading the characters' lines, I kind of picture what their voices would be like. And I kind of came up with an amazing uh, fan cast for this series. And as I, as new characters come into the book, and as I read the new books, I in, I input more of the more of who I want. And if this ever does become a series, Matt, if you're watching this, you need to get Johnny Young Bosch as Lynx. Because I know him being a smart mouth in a good majority of characters he's played. From Ichigo from Bleach to Zora from Black Clover to Yu Narukami and Adachi from Persona 4. Bosch fits Lynx to a T. And I know... What was what, what was something I was saying? Uh, I lost my train of thought. Regardless, Master Defenders is a hell of a series. And I'm going to say this. Matt had no idea I'm making this video until I put out a promo just yesterday. And I can't say enough good things about this series. I really can't. I mean, I could, but I, I, I'm not making I'm not making a whole hour video of this. But in in short, Master Defenders is a series that I think legends like Stan Lee and the guys from uh, from DC. I don't know a good majority of DC writers, and hell. George Lucas himself would be impressed of this. And this just shows a testament to what a kid's imagination can do when he gets older and builds this amazing world. And one last th co topic, one last thing I want to say about this is that it feels like a genuine universe. Because you know when people make fan fiction characters, they just plop them into the world and they like just plop them into the world and it just, it doesn't feel as natural. Master Defenders is its own universe and it works. This is a guy who took the time, much like Stan Lee, to create the universe that they're in, create the rules, create the laws, create the characters, create the continuity, and it never feels like it's copying off of anything. And that's... One thing I love about the series is that it doesn't... Like, you could try, but you will never find anything that even indicates Master Defenders is anything but its own fantastic original st world. And that's enough said, to be honest. 
Go and check out Master Defenders. Go check it out. Go follow Matt Banks. Go purchase this book. Go purchase his merch. Just go. And that is it for the first episode of Tales from the Convention, ladies and gentlemen. And I will, I'm thinking about doing these outside of my regu regularly, uh, state, reg ah, sorry, mouth got jumbled. My regular, regular scheduled videos, because I normally do four videos a month, but I'm going to start doing these convention tales every two months, because I feel like that's a good, uh, breakaway moment from doing one and then doing my regular videos and then doing another one in the next two months. So I'm going to say for the last time, go out and purchase Master Defenders. If you love sci-fi and superheroes with a little twist of adult subject matter, I mean, not too adult subject matter, just a good amount of action, romance, deception, loss, overcoming the odds, or if a bunch of you have uh, kids who are interested in this kind of thing, this is a perfect series to get them into. Once again, enough said. This is Gamer K, logging out.